Well, you are joining us for another instalment of Deal Analyzer Week 2020, where all this week we've been celebrating the launch of the new Lendl Deal Analyzing Tool. And uh, as always, my guest is uh, Avaram Shaha, CEO and co-founder of Lendl, joining me across all these calls. Hello, Aviram, and today I'm delighted to welcome Mr. Phil Stewardson, property developer, PT member, and a friend, somebody I'm proud to call my friend. So, Phil, welcome along to the call. Oh, thank you very much, Vanessa. Nice to see you and, and have a chat. And Aviram, after exchanging a few emails and messages and you, you're kindly pointing us in the right direction with some stuff and helping us set up, then, Lord, I'm, uh, it's, it's really nice to finally chat with you. Likewise. Fantastic. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. So, Phil, um, in terms of the actual software, you've, you've started using it and uh, finding your way around it. But if we could just really start at, you know, where you're at post-COVID-19, how has your property investor life changed? And are you thinking uh, that there's a lot more risk about now much more amplified um, in the property sector and that these kind of digital tools are a good way to mitigate that oh we, without doubt uh, vanessa um we haven't um haven't started back fully yet post covid um unfortunately during that period we've lost a few friends and we've also lost a member of staff um, and we know of a number of people that have been affected so we have been ultra careful, you know, and, and lockdown. All we've really focused on has been urgent repairs, really, which we've which we've kept addressing. Um, and for the first time in twenty five years, we haven't bought anything for three months. Wow! Uh, as I say, we've just focused on repairs, and we are in a position where we we sort of have to buy. We've got a team of lads that we employ and a, a sort of gang of subbies that we give regular regular work to so we will obviously be starting back soon but consistently up until the early part of this year we bought a property for the past nearly 10 years we bought a property every two weeks um, well, that, mm, that's a big big change yeah, yeah. so um so what we we will be doing we, we're starting back on more uh, on, on a sort of low level from next monday um we will be focusing initially on maintenance we, we are uh, and have been sort of looking out for new deals over the over perhaps the last two three weeks but i am very very i'm, I'm amazed really at, at what's being reported in the market with how agents say they are busy um whether and i genuinely believe they're busy but i do wonder how many of those sales are actually going to come to fruition um, and i think a lot of them are perhaps busy renegotiating deals that got stalled with lockdown where people are saying either i'm concerned i don't want to buy i'm concerned i don't want to pay as much or my lender is now insisting on a bigger deposit and we, we, we've got a couple of sales on at the moment where we think that's a likely scenario. So we are very conscious that although we know the market is going to stall, perhaps I should say, I, I, I don't see much of a fall in the areas that we operate in. Mm. Uh, and I think a lot of people will hold out for the price they want, which is a pre-COVID price. Mm. Um, uh, but they're going to take a very long time to sell on that basis. Um, and we do tend to get a lot of people come to us because we are sort of well known for buying quickly, buying unconditionally and buying for cash. So we still think those deals will be around, but we need to be confident that what has always been a bargain, that sort of, or what was a bargain three months ago that we'd be happy to pay um, by the time we've got the sale through, which will probably be four weeks, and then we've done the work, which is another six, eight, 12 weeks, depending on how involved we are, where are we going to be then? Because, um, I mean, constantly we're seeing every day um, jobs being lost. Mm. And it's not, you know, it's not a dozen or so, it's a hundred or a thousand. And I don't really see that ending before the end of this year. I think that will be a a constant stream of just bad news um 
And I certainly don't see this quick bounce back that we're being told we, we should see. I mean, the stock market has done incredibly well, but how long is that, you know, is that, is that just a, a bounce and it's going to fall back? So I, I really am sceptical about what we want to buy and we, we need to, um, I mean, we will be next week having a series of meetings to say, where are we at? You know, if we're buying anything, it, it really has got to be with the intention of going back to a fairly long term hold. Um, because, uh, you know, what we're buying now in six months time might look very expensive. It's so difficult. But we, we I mean, the landlord has come along at just the right time for us. We, we um, have a sort of love hate relationship with all technology. We know we should use it. We try to use it, but we're not really the best of friends. Um, but we are getting there. We, we've, um, we, we're trying to get all our information to be stored in the cloud now. Uh, we've, we've started using Zero, moved from Sage to Zero, which, which constantly I find absolutely incredible. Uh, it just blows my mind. Um, so Lenlord has come along at the time where we're really trying to, to grapple technology and, and use it religiously really um, and and so yeah it's it's great timing and from what I've seen so far and I have spent several hours there I'm really really impressed. Oh well that's lovely to hear that is music to our ears just give us a very quick flavour of your portfolio because you have residential you have um, you've done commercial, you do a lot of commercial to resi, you do buy and quick sell. So you, you have quite a, quite a mixed um, bag of property activities, don't you? Yeah, we do. We, we trade as six different entities. We have, there's a, uh, there's a partnership with my brother, Mark, um, which is all, all residential, which is how we started when we, we began in 1995. Um, our intention, as I think we've discussed a number of times, was to buy sort of ten properties as a as a pension fund. Really, um, we soon got to that figure and found it was actually more profitable than our than our day jobs. Um, carried it on, and then in two thousand and two, that was around the time Car uh, um, Sarah Beanie was very prominent, uh, telling everyone to buy a house and do it up. And that's what you should be doing. So we just couldn't buy anything. And that was fortunately at the time that lots of pubs were closing. Um, so for about eight years, we literally did pubs one after another. Um, and we got mixed use. So we had commercial on the ground floor, flats above. Um, and we just carried on like that as stewards and developments. And then we formed another a couple of companies alongside that, one with a friend who's a surveyor. And then we, we took the opportunity to move up north. We spoke to Lloyds Bank, who were, who were quite keen to offer funding to invest in the northwest. So very rapidly grew a portfolio up there of about 50 properties in a separate limited company. Um, so now we, we actually say when anyone asks us, we will buy anything. If there's an angle in it for us, we'll buy it. And that's, we'll buy a house, we'll buy a garden, We'll buy farmland, public libraries, fire stations, job centres. We've, we've bought all sorts, and um, if we can see if we can see something in it, we can add some value, and there's development potential. Then we'll we'll do it. But pubs pubs have just been fantastic for us. Mm. Well, there could well be some more yeah, <laughs> more absolutely. to come. Uh, I, unfortunately, that's, that's very sad. But there will be opportunities, and uh, and and now, obviously, we we've always tried to focus in areas that are unpopular. So, obviously, pubs is going to go into that realm soon. Uh, but at the moment, uh, we've been buying lots of, or up until COVID, we've been buying lots of retail. And I, I think that's where we will focus. Commercial, retail, industrial, we'll, we'll continue our focus in those areas. Retail's very out of fashion. Yet the model that we've got where we provide mixed use, um, if the premises are right for us, we will, we will keep going with that. And we've got, we've got some great small occupiers who, who you know, will survive because everything they've got is in that business. Mm. And they will make it work. 
And the, 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 the really annoying thing, which I'm really going to capitalize on post this, is that, you know, we've, we've been doing now for 20 years, small chip shops, hairdressers, Chinese takeaways, all sorts of small businesses. And then you've, you've had a value out from one of the lenders who's been saying, oh, you know, it's, it's okay, but they're only a small business. It's, it's not like it's a Marks and Spencers, is it? You know, and, and I'm just so glad we went down that route and didn't do a Marks and Spencers or, a, a, you know, one of the big people, because they are, they're the ones that have turned around and just said, I'm not paying rent, do what you want. Mm. You know, these people, they're, they're a family business and their life is into it and they, they can't wait to get back to work, most of them on Saturday. And, um, and they will make it work because they will all pull together. And, you know, we're, we're all in it together, really. Well, we certainly are. And I'm picking up on what you said about you try and see an angle um, in everything that you're doing. Um, Avram, I think if we could go to a screencast and maybe ask Phil, um, you know, do you think that the landlord uh, deal analyzer will help you to um, actually start to see those angles more clearly because you can, you know, try different uh, outcomes with different, different properties and different uh, developments? Absolutely, I do. Um, I mean, obviously, I, I don't know this property here, but if we if we just look at this, so if this was something we we were we were looking at, just everything that you need is um, is there. And what I really like, and um, what I've been doing of late, when when I've been experimenting with this, I have put the the details in. I've I've slightly made a slight variation from this um, Aviram. Is I, I, I it's. I think it's it, it, for re, for residential. It's it's brilliant, but I've I've sort of adapted it a little to use for a commercial deal we're looking at, um, and that's worked really well. But what 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 I was particularly interested in, and what I, I find um, really really helpful, is your long term assumption slider, um, where we can obviously everything on the left hand side tells us where it's going to be in a, in a month or two months time when the, the, the deal, when it's bought, when we've done the work. So all down the left hand side, we know where we're going to be at now. So do we flip it now or do we move over to the right hand view? Do we, um, do we, do we hold it for, for five, 10 years? Or do we, if you bring it right back, um, Aviram, if we sort of keep it two years, we get a little bit of rental income from it we hopefully get some capital appreciation um and instantly we can tell what you know what all the metrics are that are important to us the roi we know what the bank borrowing is going to be at that point how much we've paid off if it's repayment and and i, I mean when i was using it yesterday i was just fixated with moving the slider up and down what if we sell it straight away how what if we just keep it two years and what if we keep it 10? It's, um, th there's a lot of information there that really does help you sort of come up with your plan of, of what, of what you're doing. And everyone, everyone's circumstances are different. So some people want to take a quick profit. Other people are like we are that, you know, are now relying on the income as it is our, our sole sort of occupation. So, um but the, the information is there and it's great and to be able to ex, you know download that print it and and perhaps take it to a meeting when uh when we, we're doing other things and uh, perhaps speaking to a lender or it, it just looks really professional Thanks. i'm sure avaram's absolutely delighted to hear how how you've been using it and that you've been enjoying the user interface because you know obviously avaram that's one thing that the team has worked you know very very hard on yeah it was very important for us like that it will be easy to use um, so if i start from scratch basically with two inputs you can get your initial metrics so i just yeah. need to put the purchase price and the, and the expected rent this is for buy to let and then we use our default. So we will copy the property value, um, the same value from the purchase price. We will calculate the stamp duty. We assume that it's an like additional property, but you can play with that, of course, if it's your first yeah. property. Um, and we take 35% cash investment. 
in order to get the LTV um, below 70, 75%. And we got the question, perhaps it's uh, the place to clarify it, that the cash investment is not the deposit uh, because basically you need to put more cash in order to put, you have the stamp duty if you have uh, some kind of uh, refurbishment uh, cost that you need to put or furnishing, you need to take it into account. And our calculator take it into account. And Phil, I love to hear your takes because I think we discussed it a bit also with uh, John Howard. So either for like, if we look at, uh, even if you look at um, development uh, projects, then you can use this uh, uh, purchase details box and you can put a property value that is different than the purchase price. And then if you take the refurb costs into account, so if I will invest this amount, then I think that the property value will be this amount. Then you can have an insights on how it will look at even if you are not getting the rent, just with uh, the appreciation of the property. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that with these kind of workarounds and tweaks, you can now play with it also for development projects. Um, the first intention was, of course, like buy to let residential, but I think that um, with some workarounds, and we will keep enhance it to support those kind of projects as well. Great. Yeah, well, what I was doing last night with one that I was looking at was uh, obviously the purchase price will remain the same, but I was wondering, do we keep this individual property as one and let it as it is, in which case we had a minimal spend, um, and then uh, sort of moved around with the refurb cost to split it into two, um, and then increase the value um, and just looking at the returns in and that, so you can analyze because we, we with a um, particularly with commercial we will only really buy a commercial project if we've got at least two sort of exits really I, I, I mean not not get out of it exit uh, two uh, particular potential uh, occupiers or, or, or forms of investment so um, you know, the, will there be our preferable one, which in our case is nearly always a mixed-use scheme? Um, but we will have a at least a one or probably two backup plans where, if that totally falls apart, uh, our worst-case scenario would probably be to demolish it as a, and then let it as a yard or or then create as a building plot or whatever. So just quickly by altering those figures for what each will cost, you can you can have a, a, a projection for, um, for for all of your all of your scenarios really yeah. oh that's that's really great to hear that you've been using it like for, like that Phil uh, very gratifying to us isn't it Abiram because you know I think some people may assume that deal analyzers are mainly kind of directed at newcomer investors and indeed this one is so easy to use as Avram's already demonstrated you just put you can just fill in two fields and start to receive insights about your prospective uh, purchase but i think phil you've you you've really made the you know illustrated that it's also for um, much more advanced people and you you actually can go as deep into it and you know as, as you want and uh, it sounds like uh, you've kind of deep dived into it and really played around with it and I think um, Avram would agree that that's really the, the best way to start really getting a handle on how powerful it is because you can see all those metrics um, changing real time as you tweak tweak the data going in so it, it's not just for newcomers it, it is actually for everybody and even experienced developers, you know, will they'll really, really uh, make use of how powerful it is, I think. Yeah, I do. I, I think particularly for new investors, though, who, who really just want to focus on initially the left-hand side, it demystifies a lot of what they're, they're told is some sort of weird science that, you know, they, they need to pay someone to help them with. Um, they can just put a couple of a couple of figures in there, two, two three figures, and and they've got such a lot of information instantly, mm. uh, and and really check out, and it, it will just massively help anyone starting out with uh, fine tuning their strategy that they they perhaps don't even know what their strategy is going to be yet, but while they're considering different options, you know, do they want to buy something just as a straight let do they want to buy something that needs work 
they can put the the the, um, the information in here for two or three scenarios, and in in five minutes they've got an analysis for each. Absolutely, and Avram, um, you since we we've done our last call, you've actually added another feature haven't you the the 10 year um feature so did you just want to give a quick explanation of that yes yeah, so we've added the like um this is the nice thing with uh, the collaboration with property tribes um and the way we develop this platform so like we launched this uh, tool uh, a week ago and we already got a lot of feedback um and we added this uh long-term roi before mm -hmm. we had the roi just for the first year but here, basically, you can, and this is also Fred Pops also good for development projects, uh, short-term ones. So you can see the entire project's ROI and also um, the cash return. Uh, before that, you can you, you could use the holding period breakdown, um, and you can see your um, um, cash flow over the years. Uh, yeah. but we just put uh, one number here, like to see the entire return. And the good thing is that, as we did also before, you can um, do the same for your existing properties. Um, and in any time, you can just add the 10-year ROI to your portfolio table. Uh, for, by the way, for existing user, it's important to click Edit and Done in order to see it calculated. But once you do that, you can compare all of your properties for the long term. Uh, what we like, so it takes into account the, if you already hold this property for five years, it will take uh, the appreciation, the cash flow you generated in the last five years, and it will also take into account the prediction for the next 10 years. If you want to adjust, you just need to click on deal analyzer on existing property. The platform will take all the data from the existing property. Because of that, you see the difference between, usually you see the difference between property price and property value because this talks about the past, this talk about the next 12, 12 months, and yeah. this talks about the long term, and you can decide uh, the term you want, uh, or it's like worth for you to keep all this property. And we also will store your assumptions. And it really depends, I believe, uh, on the postcode, uh, on the type of the property, uh, so you can tweak assumptions per property. So it's not like a generic, uh, it's per property. And once you save it, we will save also your assumptions. And you can also, I think, know by now, like if it's like 29%, so like, like miss like one month in average of rent, or it's like 100%, or if it's 85%, so keep in rate. And it's very important to take this uh, uh, a, a value into account when you evaluate uh, a new uh, property or like an even existing property. You can also play with the rent appreciation prediction and with the annual uh, inflation. And then you, you can save, save that. And as I showed before, you can see um, the, the values on one table for all your properties and, uh, and you can compare them to each other. And you can also add your prospect properties to this table. Um, and get the 10 years ROI and need to, to go to the deal analysis. But once you do that, you will see it as well. So like you can see like the combination of your portfolio together with your prospect properties. Absolutely awesome. I think that is, that is so useful. And some of these um, calculations, uh, you know, they're, they're quite complex. So it's, it's so incredible to have this, software yeah, you know doing it all for you because it's all done um through coding in the back end and you, you're not going to make um mistakes i mean i am not good at maths so i'll say that now and it's definitely not my strong point and i would struggle to do anything but you know how even to know the formulas for fairly basic calculations so again i think phil having the software and the code do it for you again that's that's mitigating risk because if you get one thing wrong you know everything else is going to go out of uh, kilter isn't it yeah yeah and, and, and i think because it's so easy and so quick to change i i i really like the idea of doing a what what i expect a really optimistic and a really op pessimistic mm. And then just make sure that what I expect is actually in the middle. 
Um, and if it's not, then why isn't it? Are we are we more optimistic than we perhaps should be? Or it just gives you the opportunity to double check because you know even even now, uh, uh, Vanessa, have, having bought I don't know four hundred and well, we're somewhere between four hundred and fifty and five hundred properties that we've we've sort of bought and either held or sold or whatever. I, when when you get your offer accepted, you still do th think, oh god, I hope that's all right. And um, <laughs> something like this, it, this does think, well, you know, I've got it, I've got it in black and white that we did the analysis, we were happy to pay that price. It does work for us, and and it, you know, it just gives us a little bit more, a little bit more confidence, really. Indeed. So, um, as we come to the end now, Phil, if you could say one thing to somebody watching this um, about you know how to get the most out of the software or a tip that that you want to share uh, with the property tribes community what what would that be um, I think at the moment it is just be so careful check and double check and, and something like this as, as I've as I've just said I would recommend to everyone that um, you just need to be realistic and and just be very very careful particularly if you are starting because you, your first deal in particular just you need to be you know you've got to it's got to be right so using using then lord putting a little bit of data in um and as, as i've said like we do if you if you do a a hopeful a pessimistic and then an ultra optimistic make sure you're somewhere in the middle do it, it just all adds to your research because more than ever research is so vital now mm. no i agree 100 percent and avram i think um you know i, I really like phil's suggestion and uh, i think certainly in these kind of post-covid uh, market conditions it, it would be sensible to err on the side of caution and of course with the software you can um put in whatever um, you know, as a for instance, uh, the annual property appreciation, you can put in your own kind of cautious figure, uh, the rental appreciation, it, you know, it, it, it might not even be positive, it might be negative. Um, so you, you, as Phil says, it's almost like you can stress test the deal kind of live as you're, as you're kind of contemplating it and working it out in your own mind. Absolutely. Yeah, I, uh, because you know, everyone at the moment we're just sort of feeling our way. It, n no one knows where the market's going, but it, it's, it's, it's. I'm absolutely certain it's going to be quite a, a testing time. And mm -hmm. uh, but on the on the plus side of that, if you are if you are careful and do your research, there will be bargains. You know, there, there definitely will, and and it's. But you know, you need help like this to find out what is a bargain. Uh, because what initially might look like one may not be uh, may not be that way absolutely any any closing thoughts aviram um yes one one note about uh, the scenario stuff uh, thing that phil mentioned i think that this might be our next enhancement in the near future like to to save a store like um, a positive scenario negative scenario like in, in the middle one uh, so you can you can see a different scenario on a sport prospect property. Oh, great! Yeah, that, that would be um, that would be uh, uh, really helpful, I think. And it's um, it just gives people a little bit more confidence then. And and something like this, where you've got something, where you where you're going to see an agent, um, and obviously you want to offer invariably less than they're asking. I, I've always found agents to be receptive to that if you can back it up you know if you go and see something that's two hundred thousand, and you go and say well uh through us it's worth a hundred but you don't tell them why it's worth a hundred if you can justify that they're going to sort of respect what you're saying but i would imagine i've never been an agent but it must be pretty demoralizing to uh you know to have something on and then get a ridiculously low offer that you've got to go back and report to your client with with no justification for it so 
and we will always do that uh, i mean irrespective of, of what we're doing we will always say you know to us it's worth x because of a b and c um and you know if you can if you can prove otherwise, but you know the comparables we've done, or the the figures for the refurbishment are, are this much, and the, we see the end value is this. So unless you can show us something different, that's where we see the value as being. And and in general, we've we've always find that you know they respect that, and in a lot of cases they'll they'll take it on board, or they'll provide us with information that you know we we may have been a little pessimistic. So mm. all, all of these things that you you know you just need to do so much research now and and i think landlord does a lot of it for you well that that's a fantastic note to 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 finish on phil because you've essentially said that it could actually become a negotiating tool because it shows all the metrics and you could use that to justify your price but also um we've been doing live r d on this call and avram's eyes are lighting up at what phil's saying and thinking about how we can improve it so really fantastic as always phil to have have your um input and thank you very much for your support of Lenlord and and being on the call and really uh, really appreciate it that's lovely nice to speak to you both and uh, and great to speak to you Avram and and you know, you should be really proud you've got a, a great a great product here and good luck for the future both of you thank you very very much really appreciate that yeah, that's wonderful. So um, we've been talking to Phil Stewartson, property developer. Um, we are reaching the end of our deal analyzing uh, week now, uh, but we have got more to come. We're actually continuing on over the weekend. So do stay with us. Uh, more deal analyzing week 2020. Uh, tomorrow, Avaram and I will be back. <laughs>